Hey guys, it's Matt here and welcome to another unboxing video and today is actually day three of our five day PS1 mini event. So on day one I actually did an announcement saying hey we're doing this and then I also showed that some other controllers, some legit controllers could actually sort of kind of work on the PS1 mini with no modding whatsoever. Then on day two I did a review which hopefully you guys have also seen on the channel as well of the PS1 mini and today I'm doing an unboxing boxing video. So uh, we're doing the, we're not doing our normal setup, which usually is me on the camera mic because I need two hands for this one. So let's start opening this baby up. Now, as you can tell from looking at the box, there's this weird glare that's up there that's actually part of the box itself. It has nothing to do with the glare from my lighting. So I thought it was my lighting at first, but it actually is not, which is cool. So let's turn this thing around. As you can see there, it says, are you ready to play? Potentially, Sony, thank you for asking. 20 incredible games that defined an era. PlayStation Classic. Also, I'm going to uh, turn that serial number. And there's a serial number right there. I'm going to make sure to black that out. Uh, oh, 20 classic games preloaded. And we can see all the games here that I'm sure you guys uh, may have known are on the system. I could read them all off, but I'm sure you guys know what they are already, especially if you saw our review. Uh, oh, down here. Now, these, this is where things get interesting because these guidelines uh, or some of these rules, regulations, whatever you want to call them, uh, they, they're kind of interesting to, to read into. So let's read into some of them right now. So the first is, this console can only play preloaded games. The console cannot download other games or play PlayStation format software, discs, or audio CDs. Of course, important in case someone doesn't know, thinks they released a PlayStation. Uh, and the downloads are important because it would have been cool if they had a PSN type thing. But again, just to make sure people know, hey, by the way, it's just the 20 games. The next one just talks about the fact that they didn't include a power brick. So, okay, thanks guys. Next one just says, hey, HDMI, no S video or uh, AV cables in the off chance you didn't know. Only the included controllers are compatible with this console. And again, that's kind of right, kind of wrong. And I'm sure modders are going to completely change the game within a few weeks. All right. So basically you can save things on the system itself, but you can't use external memory cards. All right, so let's look at this next one, which is the kicker, by the way. Some game features and gameplay experience may be different from when played on previously released PlayStation consoles. I think that's legalese for saying some of these are pal yo, which is probably why if someone, let's say, plays Tekken 3 and then they can't unlock Gone, they're like, but why? And this covers Sony's behind. Carefully read the documentation, okay. System recommended for ages 6 and Metal Gear Solid and Resident Evil Director's Cut are on this. What is wrong with you, Sony? Think of the children. License for distribution in the US. Cool, I guess. But this next one really confuses me. Design and specifications are subject to change without notice? But what? Are you saying if if they release another version, not one with like uh, DualShock analog or anything, if they just release another version, they could make it smaller or larger or change the controller? Like what what does that even mean? I know some lawyer probably was like, put that on the back, but it's it's already being sold. It's in my hands. What? Packaging image for display only. Actual product may vary. Okay, so I guess it's saying, hey, this isn't as big. Don't, don't sue us for it not being as big. All right. All right, so let's turn this baby back around. Really weird that it said six and older and there was an M on the back there, but whatever. Either way, I do like the front of the box. Actually, let's check the side, which it says just a simple, hey, this is what is going to be in this in case you don't know. So nothing major. Um, oh, it's nice that it says the code number on the side there. That takes me back. Uh, so opening this up may prove to be difficult. All right, so I've done all I can with a knife because as you can tell, the sticker is stuck to the box itself. No shrink wrap or anything like that. I have to go as slow as I can so that I make sure I do Everything's fine. Oh wait, no it isn't because games became the guess. <sighs> okay, so now we're going to gently pull this tab out because I want to make sure that this box doesn't get any more ruined by Sony's, or potentially even Amazon's, packaging. Yeah, and it's packed in so tight that literally it doesn't budge. And I get it, I get it. You don't want anything to, to move around during the 
the shipping process. But maybe as, as the person who's actually trying to play the thing and take it out of the box, since that's the goal, maybe you don't pack it in so tight that I feel like I'm going to break the box. Okay, so thankfully I can slide this baby out now. And as I do slowly, ever so gently... Oh, actually, okay, no, that's nice. PS, PlayStation logo, that looks cute. But just like a Russian nesting doll, it's a box within a box. Oh, look at it. Look at those little babies sleep tucked in bed. I'm still, I'm still mad though. Let me try to get this tape off, and heck, hopefully it's not attached to the PS Mini itself, because that would be stupid. As expected, the open button does not work, the power button doesn't work because it's not plugged in, and the reset button doesn't work because, again, it's it's not plugged in. Looking down here, we can actually see a replica of what the original PlayStation sticker looked like, which is nice. Even, okay, so there are uh, normal screws in here, so it can be opened up. And also, of course, if you guys don't know, USB-based, and let's put it right over here just to rest because I have this to deal with. Oh, well, look at that. Sony loves puzzle games so much. They didn't just put a bunch of them on the PS Mini. Oh, no, 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 no. They turned the box into a giant puzzle game. Seriously, though, this is crazy. How am I ever going to put this back together again? Oh, but look at you. Oh, look at you. Also, apparently this thing can just fly away. All right, so the controller feels super duper light. Also, it's not as long as the original PS1 controller. Uh, and the buttons, they, they don't seem too bad. They, they, don't, they seem better than a generic one, but they definitely don't have as much weight as the original. Also, it's nice that they tried to make this tab uh, Sony-fied, if you will. Make it feel very reminiscent of a PlayStation 1. Lay right there, baby. This is the power cord that, uh, sadly, again, doesn't really come with a brick, so not really much to talk about here. And here is the HDMI cable. Now, I wonder, is it Sony branded? Just like the Nintendo branded HDMI cables that came with the NES and SNES Classic Editions. It isn't, so boo. Although there is braille, so that is nice for those that need it. What's this hiding underneath? Oh, documentation. Oh joy. There really is nothing major to report here. On one side, it says PlayStation with the original Sony logo. On the other side, it just tells you how the whole thing works. So cool if you need to know. To be fair, there are some differences because it is a mini. So then there you go. There's also a version in French as well. I don't speak French, but I know it's French. So if you speak French, then there you go. Now, before we wrap things up, I want to compare the size of an original PlayStation with the PS1 mini. Look at that. It is so much smaller. I know they only said that it's uh, that it's 40% smaller, but still, wow! Look at how small that looks compared to an original PlayStation. But that's not all. Here is my copy of Tekken 2, and look how they look side by side. The Mini is smaller than a copy of Tekken 2 in a small jewel case, mind you, not even a long box. It is even almost as thick as the PS1 Mini. And now look at my copy of The Legend of Dragoon. It is actually not only taller, but even thicker, seemingly thicker than the PS1 Mini. How crazy is that? All right, guys, thank you all so much for watching another unboxing video on the channel and taking part in our PS1 Mini event. Tune in tomorrow for an episode of TG Tutorials, where I teach you how to record PS1 Mini footage using an Elgato. All right, guys, thank you all so much. Love you all. Take care and tune in next time, literally tomorrow. So, see ya.